Well, we welcome Mr. Stanley Harawas here to uh, the interview circle tonight. Welcome, Stanley. Thank you very much. That was, thank you. It's great to be here. I'd forgotten that prayer. Forgotten the prayer? Yeah, right. It's a pretty yeah. good prayer. It is pretty good. <laughs> 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 well, um, speaking of things you've said, maybe you've forgotten. Let me remind you of a few. Um, one thing, I don't think you've forgotten this, but you, you will often say that the, the first task of the church is to be the church, not to make the world more just and things like the first task of the church is to let the world know it's the world. Right. And uh, there's been folks who have said that because you talk in such ways, you're, you're some sort of uh, tribalistic, fideistic sectarian. Yeah, I wouldn't mind being any of those, only uh, you can't withdraw from the world. Hell, we're surrounded. So uh, I figure you just have to keep the wagon train going through and you're going to take a lot of casualties. And uh, you want to take casualties for the right reasons. And on the whole, the church in America hasn't been taking casualties for the right reasons. Most, I mean, in America, we produce Christians that say things like, I believe Jesus is Lord, but that's just my personal opinion. Now, you, you wonder, I mean, what could possibly produce someone with a soul that shallow. Now, uh, <laughs> so, so, we're, so we're not well positioned to be a church ready to take on the world, I fear. What, um, why, why do you think we've gotten ourselves in the place that that's the status quo? Um, I think that uh, Christians think, well, I say now that I'm back among the Methodists, I have discovered that the Methodists have a conviction is that God is nice. And, uh, <laughs> and, and, the, and since they're a sanctificationist people, they don't know they're a sanctificationist people, but it's in the tradition. But they, since they think they ought to be like God, so Methodists are nice like God. And I mean, it just wears you out dealing with nice people all your life. <laughs> <laughs> so, it's hard to know what to do with this. <laughs> yeah. So, so, you know, you, you just would like to produce a few leaner and meaner folks that uh, follow Jesus, and uh, that would make a difference in the world in which we find ourselves. So you've talked a lot about how eschatology is inseparable from ethics, inseparable from the way of life of Christians. What do you, what do you mean when you talk about that? Eschatology is a big word that says when Jesus was conceived in Mary's belly, a new world was born. That's the reason why I say Christians are not called to live lives of nonviolence because we believe nonviolence is a way to rid the world of war. But in a world of war, as faithful followers of Christ, we cannot imagine being anything other than nonviolent because it's not like you have to make the world nonviolent. Jesus did it. Jesus did it. Our problem is, is we don't believe that. <laughs> now the question is, is how do you, as a church, embody that kind of truthfulness that is required for people to live nonviolent with, what, with one another because we're willing to tell one another the truth. I mean, the truth is hard to bear. God loves us, and we think that's good, good for God. But what, what, how to turn that into trust is a very hard matter. Hmm. Um, you've written a good bit about how death, our view of death, plays into the difficulties we find ourselves in. Talk to us about that. Well, I believe Americans um, think they live in a world in which we just get good enough at science and medical, medical care, they can get out of life alive. And, um, and therefore, I, I mean, one of my ways of putting it is, um, if someone can come to divinity school today, they're usually someone that's already failed another line of work before they get, <laughs> but that, that's all right, God's pretty good with failures. And, um, yeah. Amen. So um, they come to Divinity School, and after a semester or so, they say, I'm just really not into Christology this year. I'm really into relating. And 
they say, oh, all right, go take some more clinical pastoral education, so on and so on. Uh, a kid can go to medical school and their kids and after a semester or so they can say, I'm just not really into anatomy this year. I'm really into relating. I'd like to take some more psychiatry, which means they don't know anything about psychiatry since it's biochemistry today. And, but in medical school, they're, say, they're told, we don't give a damn what you're interested in, kid. Take anatomy or ship out. Now, why, why is it that medical schools are so much more morally interesting than divinity schools today? Because people don't believe an inadequately trained minister or priest can damage their salvation, but people do believe an inadequately trained doctor can hurt them. And just to the extent that people care more about who their doctor is and who their priest is, you can see how we live lives of close, past, uh, close practical atheism. And that all has to do with death. We think somehow medicine will keep us alive in a way that when we die, um, we don't have to know we're dying. So we ask doctors to keep us alive to the point that when we die, we don't have to know we're dying, and therefore we don't have to come to terms with death. Mm. Now, what it means to be a Christian is to learn how to die early. And that's that's very hard for us to take in. And that's, what, and that's how, as a people of God, you find ourselves in deep tension with a world that's about the denial of death. I mean, how Americans think Donald Trump is going to make them safe? I mean, when did Christians become Christians to be safe? I mean, that's not our game. Our game is danger. And thank God, because otherwise, life is just so damned uninteresting. Stanley Harwash, he'll be back. Thank you. Wow. <laughs>